Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Eric here over at HK Constrictors. Uh, today I just wanted to do a real quick update on how our uh, Pucalba Peruvian girl's uh, progressing with her uh, hopeful litter in her belly with a May due date and then also um, our Suriname girl that's doing about three weeks. So I uh, wanted to get this out real quick. This is uh, pretty much the most prized uh, snake in our collection. I just realized I don't even have a name for her and that's pretty sad because she's an amazing, amazing snake. Uh, this is our, our uh, girl. She's four years old now, produced by Ed Marino. Uh, this is our Amazon Basin Emerald Tree Boa. I think she's about close to 1400 grams now, um, but you can see the size of her body. I was lucky enough to get in there right before the lights went out because you do not want to reach in a cage uh, with any of these arboreal snakes, Amazon basins, the emerald tree boas, or the green tree pythons. Uh, night and day difference with attitude. But she's pretty amazing. She's uh, basically like a living dinosaur. See if you guys can see the head at all. She keeps turning on me. There you go. But you can see the head's pretty good size. Teeth are probably even bigger. Luckily I don't see those teeth I see the teeth it's probably too late at that point um, she's just an awesome animal but something uh, that I won't get out too often I like to leave these guys alone they tolerate handling um, they don't they don't really stress out it's almost you get a feeling like they're just uh, extremely intelligent and they know that they could pretty much hurt you if they felt like it so <laughs> they don't uh, they don't do too much but her and the male I have are, are both puppy dog tame just like this She's probably as thick and as big as my three-year-old Surinams, and she's, I don't know, this is my, my first Amazon basins I've raised up. I got these from Ed Marino when they were about, I think, six months old. They were both still red, so they're still early on, uh, but just, this has been a dream snake my entire life, so if I had to get rid of my entire collection tomorrow, um, I would keep the pair of Amazon basins for sure. They're just amazing species so hopefully I'll be able to produce some of these babies someday get a s small taste of what Ed Marino experiences and, and a couple of other breeders that have success with these guys so um, got one more year to go and uh, she will be plenty big enough and old enough so if you think uh, it feels like it takes forever with uh, true red tails on an Amazon basin that makes the, the time tick away even slower, in my opinion. So, hope you like her. She's uh, she's beautiful, so maybe you guys can help me pick a name. So I feel uh, embarrassed that I haven't yet. So, let's take a look at the uh, Suriname and Peruvian and uh, see how things are progressing. So here's our Pokey Ground girl. I wasn't 100% sure on our due date. Um, I had it anywhere from, I think, April 6th to... Uh, the end of April because she had a really late post ovulation shed um, but by the looks at, of her uh, right now I think it's really going to be the the first part of April uh, so we're looking at really about three weeks and you can see basically babies start right about here and you can see how much she bulges out and comes all the way down and what's cool is they purposely lay on their vent to almost give themselves uh, support for the pressure of the babies and you can see her babies have shifted down significantly. The other thing is I'm starting to see muscle mass deplete in the first third of her body which usually happens about two to three weeks uh, before they give birth. You'll really start to see this thin out to where you can start to see their spine a little bit more. Um, she's staying on the heat most of the time but I find that in the evening um, she'll actually go over to the cool side and um, I found that it's it's almost as if she's cooling the babies down uh, little by little because their growth rate is slowing now that they're getting ready to be born. So, just some cool things that I've observed over the last few years of producing these. Um, but everything right now is like clockwork. Um, I typically will feed them a couple of meals after their ovulation. Um, I was a little extra careful with her, and she's kept her weight on pretty good um, through her pregnancy. I think the last meal was about eight weeks um, 
before her due date in early April, so about five weeks ago was her last meal, and it was extremely small. Um, I don't even think she had any uh, poop from it. She absorbed all of it. I think she had a little bit of pee is all. But it's cool to see them progress, and um, it can really give you an idea if you're the due date that you have predicted is, is fairly accurate. Usually it's 105 days from post ovulation shed or 120 days uh, from their ovulation. But she's going like clockwork right now. Um, she had 17 babies and three slugs in her first litter in 2019. And right now I would, I would guess from her size and her thickness, she's probably got about 20 in there, maybe a couple or more. Uh, she just really packed all the way basically the whole second half of her body. So super excited about this litter. Um, probably the best surname litter I've had to date was her 2019 babies from the other father that has very cool secondary markings like you can see here, but he's brighter. Um, she's kind of the typical uh, surname or true red tail. After you breed him a couple of times, they start, start to darken up quite a bit. Um, she's obviously darker than normal because she's gravid, but uh, but yeah, her tail has darkened because of breeding. It was more of a fire engine red before she had her first litter. Um, kind of like the the male has kept his. Um, so super excited about this one. Just want to give you guys an update on uh, the Poke Grounds so about three weeks out. Also wanted to give you guys a quick update on our uh, Rio Bravo Pucalpa Peruvian girl. Um, I think the last video I had was about a month ago. And I can now see some really good swelling all along here. Um, she's kind of laying on it, makes it a little puffier. Um, but that's what I was really looking for is, uh, she's two months out right now. Uh, first part of May, first week of May is her due date. But what I look for is this area to start swelling, which tells me she's got babies growing. Um, if it was all slugs, this would not be growing at all. Um, they're basically going to stay the size they are uh, for the most part, but she's got some good growth in here. Just moving around from my voice um, And babies are still high up her vents right about here and uh, They haven't shifted down at all So she's looking great. Um, I may feed her one more really small meal. Not sure yet um, She's looking pretty good. So I might just not risk it and leave her alone um, but she's looking amazing. I just can't wait to, to see what kind of baby she produces, especially from the light-colored male uh, that I paired her up with that was also Rio Bravo. So this is uh, going to be a first uh, potential Peruvian litter for us. So we produced a few surnames, obviously, but uh, this will be the first Peruvian, so this will be a, a big deal. Um, something I've always dreamed of having, so it's pretty cool. She thinks she's a cobra right now, so... She's always one of my nicer Peruvians. She acts pretty much like my Suriname. Uh, so that's good when they when they get bigger. It's always nice to have them calm. So that's just a quick update. Um, she's pretty much staying on the, the hot side the whole time right now. Um, I think she might have moved to the cool side a few times, but not like the Suriname is right now. So uh, the temp's right around 90 to 92 degrees on her hot spot. And she pretty much hangs out there for the most part. It's just... Uh, She'll either get a tighter coil or loosen up her coil, depending on how much heat she wants to retain. But she's uh, she's progressing nicely, so I'll do another update in about a month, and hopefully this area keeps getting thicker and thicker. So the thicker it gets, the more babies she's got in there. So super excited about this one. Hope you guys like the updates. Um, if you haven't gone to our website yet, go to our uh, Contact Us page and uh, fill out your information, and that'll get you on... Uh, basically the email list. So anytime I put anything up for sale on my website, um, I give anyone that's filled out that form, you'll get an email with a date and exact time that things will go live on my website. Uh, kind of gives you an advance notice uh, so you can jump on there before anyone else um, is aware that they're going up for sale. Kind of give you a, a front row seat to that first opportunity on things. Uh, this I can't take credit for. This is a combination from Brian Abrahamson, uh, Florida Redtail times Tude Hope. So this is a 2019 girl. So super excited about this one. Uh, completely different than Pokey Grounds, obviously. She has a nice reduced pattern. 
and a crazy reverse stripe on her tail. And the red is just, hopefully she keeps that into adulthood. From all the stuff I've seen from uh, Brian's collection, that red stays or almost intensifies as adults. So uh, I'd like to put some pokey ground blood in this and uh, strengthen up the genetics, more diversity. And then uh, got a few years to go on this, so that one's going to feel like an eternity as well. But thought you guys would like to see that tail real quick on that one. All right, guys. Thanks for watching as always, and I uh, hope put another video out in uh, two or three weeks and give you another update. Hopefully by then it'll probably be uh, a brand new litter drop from the Pokey Grounds, and then hopefully we see a lot more swelling in the, the Peruvian girl, uh, leading towards a nice, nice birth in May. So stay tuned and uh, share this video as much as you can, much as you want. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one.